right, so I got a request on my question answer asking me why I am not in the video. So here today, I am in the video for chapter 15 of Hatchet. We left off yesterday where he had made like an enclosure for the fish so he'll always have fish readily available to him. As we move on to chapter 15, here we go. The days had folded one into another and mixed so that after two or three weeks, he only knew time passed in days because he made a mark for each day in the stone near the door to his shelter. Um, when it said he made a mark, in my mind, I'm picturing like he made like a tally mark like he was um, somehow with a stick maybe scraping into the rock and making a tally mark. Real time, he measured in events. A day was nothing, not a thing to remember. It was just sun coming up, sun going down, some light in the middle. I like how it said that he measured the days in events because I feel like as a language arts teacher, we talked about recently character setting and events, and he's not, so he's just thinking about the events, the things that he does as how he is measuring time. So, events, since we've been talking about those. But events, events were burned into his memory, and so he used them to remember time, to know and to remember what had happened to keep a mental journal. He has to keep a mental journal because he doesn't have any paper and pencil to keep a regular journal. There had been the day of first meet. That had been a day that had started like the rest. Up after the sun, clean up the camp, and make sure there is enough wood for another night. But it was a long time, a long time of eating fish and looking for berries, and he craved more, craved more food, heavier food, deeper food. He craved meat. He thought in the night now of meat. He thought of his mother cooking a roast, or he dreamed of turkey, and one night he awakened before he had to put wood on the fire, with his mouth making saliva and the taste of pork chops in his mouth. So real, so real, and all just a dream. But it left him intent on getting meat. I'm trying to think, what in the woods could he eat that would be considered meat? I personally think the fish he's been eating would be meat. But what other meat is out there in the woods? He had been working farther and farther out for wood, sometimes now going nearly a quarter of a mile away from the camp for wood. And he saw small animals. Squirrels were everywhere. Small red ones that chattered at him and seemed to swear and jump from limb to limb. There were also many rabbits, large gray ones with a mix of reddish fur, smaller, faster gray ones that he had only seen at dawn. The larger ones sometimes sat until he was close, but then bound and jerked two or three steps before freezing again. He thought if he worked at it and practiced, he might hit one of the larger rabbits with an arrow or a spear. Never the small ones or the squirrels. They were too small and fast. Would you eat a squirrel or a rabbit? Then there were the fool birds. They had exasperated him to the point where they were close to driving him crazy or insane. The birds were everywhere, five and six in a flock, and their camouflage was so perfect that it was possible for Brian to sit and rest, leaning against a tree, 
with one of them standing right in front of him in a willow clump two feet away, hidden, only to explode or fly into a deafening flight just when Brian least expected it. He just couldn't see them. He couldn't figure out how to locate them before they flew because they stood so perfectly still and they blended in so perfectly well and that made it worse. Oh, and what made it worse was that they were so dumb or they seemed to be dumb that it was almost insulting the way they kept hiding from him nor could he get used to the way that they exploded up when they flew. It seemed like every time he went for wood, which was every morning, he spent the whole time jumping and jerking in fright as he walked. One memorable morning, he had actually reached for a piece of wood, what he thought to be a pitchy stump at the base of some dead birch. His fingers close to touching it, only to have it blow up in his face because it was the birds. But on the first day of the first meet, he had decided the best thing to try would be a fool bird. And that morning, he set out with his bow and spear to get one, to stay with it until he got one and ate some meat. Not to get wood, not to find berries, but to get a bird and eat some meat. That shows me that he is very determined. At first, the hunt had not gone well. He saw plenty of birds working up along the shore of the lake to the end, then down the other side, but he only saw them after they flew. He had to find a way to see them first, see them and get close enough to either shoot them with the bow or use the spear, and he could not find a way to see them. Great camouflage. When he had gone halfway around the lake and had jumped up 20 or so birds, he finally gave up. Oh, I thought he was determined and he sat down at the base of a tree. He had to work this out. He had to see what he was doing wrong. Oh, so he hasn't given up. He wants to do some time thinking. There were birds there, and he had eyes. He just had to bring the two things together. Looking wrong, he thought. I am looking wrong. More. More than that, I am being wrong somehow. I am doing it the wrong way. Fine. Sarcasm came into his thoughts. I know that. Thank you. I know I'm doing it wrong. But what is right? The morning sun had cooked him until it seemed his brain was frying. Sitting by the tree. But nothing came until he got up and started to walk again. And he hadn't gone two steps when a bird got up. It had been there the whole time. While he was sitting there thinking about how to see them, one was sitting right next to him. He almost screamed, but he didn't. But this time, when the bird flew, something caught his eye. And it was the secret key. The bird cut down toward the lake. Seeing it couldn't land in the water, it turned and flew back up the hill into the trees. When it turned, curving through the trees, the sun had caught it. And Brian, for an instant, saw it as a shape. Sharp pointed in front, back from the head in a streamlined bullet shape to a fat body, kind of like a pear. Imagine the shape of a pear. 
That's how he thought of it, with one point on one end and a little fat body on the other, a flying pear.